Greetings to you all. Listen carefully everyone. For what I'm going to reveal to you is very important and I hope that through this intel we can stop Octogon related to the political setup just unfolded in Paris. What I'm going to tell you concerning the Paris massacre and Switzerland behind it will bring little danger to me and my family as Octogon from the Alps has set all their cards on the actual preparations of what's coming up. Please someone provide a safe haven for me and my family and I will give in return actual names of Swiss Octogon members who are behind the latest Paris tragedies. Do not trust the Swiss Nazi police nor the Swiss fascist judiciary as they are involved in it up to their necks and the entire Swiss people consents with it just as Hitler's willing helpers did. Ok there we go. If you want to solve a crime as in this case the Paris massacres there are two perimeters within which the profiler is going to base the case on. First who or what is the crime serving most as in the Latin proverb is fecit qui prodest, meaning he who profits most is guilty. And second perimeter, the money trail. And I will prove to you here that both perimeters lead to Octogon, Switzerland of the Nazi Templars. Number one perimeter, did it serve the Muslims? No, on the contrary, it will set their lives in Europe 40 years back. Did it serve us, the normal people? No, we are heading towards less personal freedom and more restrictive total control New World Order laws. Did it serve the left-wing people and parties? No, on the contrary, they are going to face more police state and less libertarian freedom. In fact, it only serves the rise of the fascists, the right-wing parties and the centre of it all, Switzerland. Perimeter 2, the money trail. Charlie Hebdo is getting 250,000 euros from Google through their digital press fund and for their next week edition a prognostic estimate of 1 million copies uh, printed compared to the habitual 45,000 copies each week which the name Hebdo means standing for weekly, Weekly Charlie. And the combined French media raised half a million euros for Charlie. This is like a farewell present to silence them up and don't talk about what really happened. Because when the whole media attention is over in a few weeks and return to their 45,000 copies or less, they will have to close the doors before summer. Why? Well, because of the internet. A lot of newspapers are in financial difficulties and have problems selling their newspapers. And this is where the problem started, really. So the whole Paris massacre is more about Je Suis newspaper. Charlie Hebdo started off in the Roaring Sixties as a revolutionary hippie-like satirical magazine making cartoons about anything that didn't fit into the zeitgeist of the 60s. They were having fun, earning an easy buck with, that, with what they could do best, drawing cartoons. And as the French traditionally love criticizing their emperors, rulers and authorities and even chop their heads off once in a while with those typical French inventions made for the occasion called guillotines, Charlie Hebdo then called Harry Kiri lived in high esteem and very well paid for their efforts. So when the 90s came and more and more people swapped the newspaper for a computer it was very hard for them to get off the high horse. And what else can a cartoonist do? Then when the 21st century came along the corner as with most French revolutions it meant the guillotine for many a French newspaper and in the entire world too. 
where, like in the French subway, all newspapers in people's hands had been replaced with portable cell phones and iPads, with everyone fanatically punching the buttons of these tokens of the new revolution. So Charlie couldn't sell any more newspapers. No more work, no more money. Damn, what do we do now? The house has to be paid and the second holiday dwelling at the French Mediterranean. And with that revolutionary er era of the 60s long gone by in a new world where the only dream is finance and consumption in a world where the ego and purse can be filled beyond all limits, new ideas had to be found in a new world where incomparable wealth has replaced ethics, conscience and fraternity long ago. New rules, new guillotines, you might say. And as crime often is related to ego, it is here that Charlie Hebdo's criminal behaviour really started, leading to the spiral of violence of January 2015, now trying to suck us all in when on September 30th, 2005, another newspaper in distress from Scandinavia published the first Mohammed caricatures of the Islamic prophet. So Charlie's by then already criminal mindset thought by themselves, well, this is the publicity we need to sell more newspapers so we can survive. Well, look at that Scandinavian newspaper. They're selling like mad and the whole world talks about it. We can do the same thing in France and keep the guillotine out for a couple of more years, maybe even a decade. So it was largely discussed in the editorial. They studied the judiciary consequences and awaited to see what happened in the end to the other newspaper. And when the court case finally resulted to a positive come out for the other newspaper, and only four months after those initial publications, on February the 9th, 2006, Charlie published their own disgusting little Mohammed caricatures, showing the bearded, bearded geezer in all sorts of sodomizing positions. And not because of free speech, as they hysterically claimed in their defense, but out of pure greed to get more publicity and more sales to save their company out of the digital grip of the 21st century and to get filthy rich again like in the good old times. Just watch how their weekly hepto sales went up from the regular 140,000 in 2005 to 480,000, that's half a million, in 2006, right after the uh, caricatures of Mohammed and then slowly diminishing again to 45,000 in 2014. You can see that's half a million because of the, pro the profit or, you know, it's all about greed. I'll put in the link for you. So the article was from Le Monde, which is not just any newspaper. It's one of the biggest in the world. So... Um, Oh. And also the Wikipedia page of uh, Charlie Hebdo uh, confirms the, it says, the great commercial success of uh, sodomizing the prophet. Uh, I mean, that this, this is media, the mainstream media uh, prostitution. You know? They get money for pro for for sodomizing a prophet. <laughs> I mean, it was right in the post 9/11 2001 era where Bush was getting us hyped up for the Crusades, murdering millions and using depleted uranium weapons of mass destruction. So what the hell? Who's gonna stop us? Charlie thought. And times of war are the best moments to get filthy rich. Hey Charlie, everyone is doing it. Hey Charlie, French companies did it, collaborating for the Nazis. Switzerland is always doing it. So why not Charlie Hebdo? 
And in this time we can see a totally intransparent web of different financial enterprises owning Charlie Hebdo, even called Edition Kalashnikov at times. So you can see here the previous thing was also Le Monde, a serious newspaper. Uh, quite critical and many times. So one million euros, that was in you know 2006 when they did the Mohammed uh, caricatures. And then they called it Edition Rotative, that means uh, rotating um, editions, you know. <laughs> it is rotating all the time. Before it was Harakiri in Paris, Rue Nicolas Appert, well that's probably where they got uh, massacred by some Muslims. We had enough of, this, of all this here. So there was uh, the, the owner here was Stéphane Charbonnier or Sharp. Here it says too, the, the Gérant. Um, he was the editor. Well, he's dead. That, that happens, you know, with greed. You know, finally gutted. So this is, um, you know, this is financial crime. I'm sure Eric Porto, they probably have connections to the uh, to the right as well, to the far right. There's no doubt. Uh, I, I mean, I know. I've got proofs. So somebody who knows about financial crime should look it up, you know, instead of all pointing at Muslims and, you know. Uh, it's financial crime. That's what it is. And it's... Um, Right-wing politics. Yeah, uh, Charbonnier, Sharp, he's gone. Uh, they we're having a lot of internal strife all the time because of money, of course. Eric Porto. Uh, I think this one, Eric Porto, he might be still there. I don't know, and uh, he might give uh, answer to a lot of questions. And if the Frenchies don't want to do it, maybe the uh, the Americans can do this, because I mean, <laughs> this is what the uh, this is the origin of this so-called terrorism. You know, it's greed and financial crime, you know, related to the far right, which I'm going to talk to you about now. And here it says Charlie Hebdo, les éditions, uh, the um, rotating editions. Having 1 million euros, 85% are going to the shareholders, Philippe Val and Cabu. Well, they're gone. They got 330,000. This guy here, 110,000 euros. And Eric Porto and his wife, he's the uh, the financing, um, responsible for the financing of 55,000 euros. And... Um, Oh, yeah. It's all about money, you know. It's all about greed. They're trying to sell us this thing as under the uh, under the banner of uh, free speech. I mean, where is free speech? We got the Patriot Act, you know. What? Well, what? I mean, what are they talking about free speech anyway? You know, it's all about greed and money. That's what it's all about. And of course politics, right-wing politics. Within Charlie Hebdo there, there was a lot of strife. They were like fighting like wolves over their prey and even owned by shareholders. Which you can read here in, in French. Uh, le, verité déjà, le vérité déjà dans le fruit. You know, it was already rotten. On ne rigole plus à Charlie Hebdo. You know, they don't laugh anymore at Charlie Hebdo's. So, this article, here it's in Acrime or something like that. Yeah, there it is, Acrime, Action Critique Media, who were criticizing the media, Observatoire de Media, an observatory, you know, over the media. So here's the the, uh, the entire uh, article, 
and it's talking here about here Olivier Ciron. Uh, that is Olivier Ciron. He left. So many people, they l'équipe des anciens. So many people left, and I put in the links for it, but you know it's in French. So they're trying to sell us, sell us the uh, you know, in the media that there were so good people, you know, having a good time and you know fighting for free speech and all that. But in fact, they were fighting over their prey, over the money all the time. There was a whole rotten situation in there. And, uh, well, that's what happened. So this is worthwhile reading. It's 2013 by Olivier Sion, and, um, who was working at uh, Charlie Hebdo. And he, you know, he writes what really happened there. So here's his article. You can see some more of the absolutely disgusting, you know, cartoons they made. You know, like this here. <laughs> it's disgusting, isn't it? It's all very homo stuff. You know, it's always with a lot of naked asses. This is Mohammed, his naked ass. And why? You know. I mean, I'm not religious, you know, but uh. I don't like it very much, but it doesn't mean that I don't respect religious people, neither Christians or Buddhists or Muslims or Jews or whatever. We have to respect them. I mean, I can have a different opinion, but not like this. It's disgusting. This is hate. This is hate porn. It's political. It's right wing. Then, in the beginning of 2006, the right-wing community got very much interested in the racial aspect of the anti-Islamic cartoons of this original left-wing newspaper and liking it very much. Charlie needs money. Right-wing has traditionally more of it. And there we go. An unholy marriage between the ultra-left and the extreme right. Going in bed together and nicely greased up with a lot of money for this kind of rough and slightly painful intercourse between the politically far left and far right. So here the left got literally f in the uh, sodomized like in Charlie Hebdo's cartoons in compromising positions. And polytrix it is. So now that finally some Muslims stepped into the wide open trap and after the Paris massacre, the far right and Marine Le Pen with uh, Switzerland behind will try and kick François Hollande and his socialist government out of office. Remember how I showed you in my previous video how it is exactly both Marine Le Pen and Switzerland reacting with fascist measures after the Paris massacre. And it was in fact the French National Front that introduced the Swiss Octogon into the Charlie Hebdo financing affair. Because the entire international fascist community knows that if they need weapons or financing, Switzerland will always help. Just as Octogon's Nazi Templars finance Hitler. Here in Zurich 1923, financed by Swiss General Ulrich Wille Jr. This is why Marine Le Pen will always be thankful to the Swiss as here on December 18th, 2014, showing her gratitude, saying, Switzerland is our dream. Or on March 15th, 2011, saying that she is inspired by Switzerland. And she has done so on numerous other occasions. So this is blood dripping off the Swiss fondue, you know, that m melted cheese. It's all in the same time frame when the far right executed their fascist wave with the Charlie Hebdo 2006 Mohammed caricatures 
and in 2007 the horrendous Swiss racist wave of showing immigrants as black sheep in the streets and media. What, you think that simultaneous act was just a coincidence? All the world's, and in this case Europe's, right-wingers, they're in contact with each other, just like a president and his ministry, or like the prophet and his pi pious follower, in, as in this case. Marine Le Pen is a lawyer, and she was brought up in the richest neighborhood of France called Saint-Cloud. And her father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, and founder of the French National Front, is a Jesuit where the Marie part in his name implies a Catholic background. Here you can see he went to a Jesuit high school, Jean-Marie Le Pen, and um, he went to a university, Panthéon, Assa, Panthéon. No. So this is fascism for the rich. Marine Le Pen's father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, is a billionaire. And I went to Saint-Cloud once, and I'm not sure if I saw more video surveillance cameras or more golf clubs. This is Nazism for the rich, who try to mobilize Nazism for the poor, to do the dirty job for them. And this is rich Octogon Switzerland, the Alpine conglomerate and Hydra with eight mortal heads. And there she is again. She's even holding a Swiss, uh, a Swiss flag of the a Templars, simplified Templars flag. And in her right hand, she's having uh, the French rooster, which is of course Horus, as I showed you before in my uh, Omaha Beach video. So she is Swiss. You know, there's no doubt. Swiss is everywhere. They emigrated everywhere in the world. They all have. You know, they're sleeper agents, as in the U.S., you know, one million Swiss Americans in the U.S. And here in Switzerland, they're everywhere, the Swissies. She is Swiss, believe me. And the Switzerland of the Octogon Nazi Templars is the base of Nazism, providing both weapons and money. It's no wonder that the weapons used in more than 10 Nazi murders by the German Nationalist, Nationalist Socialist Underground NSU, that they came from Switzerland. Now you can see one of the main guns used uh, in killing many people lately, and uh, from Switzerland. It's, it's a, it says a Czech gun. It's like, you know... Secret Service stuff, you know. It's always Switzerland. You know, always. And in Ansi, liquidating an entire Arab-British family with a Swiss gun from Switzerland. Uh, here it says, it happened 40 miles from Switzerland and the, the gun was a Luger P08, uh, which was standard issue to the Swiss Army. And why does it say highly distinctive? Well, because the, the Germans use the uh, the nine uh, parabellum, that means for the war. Bellum is war, and para is for. And the Swiss use the um, uh, a thirty-two caliber, small caliber. The father of the Arab British family was involved in financing Islamic State and other Islamic suicide missions with Swiss Nazi funds over the Swiss banks in Wahhabi Qatar where the Swiss got banking licenses in 2008 due to the US pressure by the IRS. It's therefore not very long after the Swiss banks got their Qatari license that ISIS Islamic State popped up and given and has given the name ISIS because Switzerland also means ISIS. See the Pharaoh show. And about the financing, I explained that partly in this video and some other videos I made. I have no doubt that the hardware used in the Paris massacres came from and through Switzerland. And these Muslim pawns have no idea. 
The Islamofascism already started in World War II with German SS Muslim divisions like Hanjar and Skanderberg under Jerusalem's Mufti Amin al-Husseini and Yasser Arafat's uncle. Later the Swiss great eminences as François Genoux, well, he was a personal friend of Hitler, and Ahmed Huber al Swissri continued the collaboration between octagons Nazis and militant Islam. See my other videos for that. Now here you can see this is François Genoux, one of the most dangerous men of the 20th century. And just watch his evil black eyes, you know, just like the that evil Swiss Nazi aggressive cop that hit me. It's the same. It's the same. The Paris massacre was ordered, financed and organized by Octogon of the Nazi Templars. And this is why they prefer to use lost souls, lost between the Western culture and the Oriental roots who have done prison for petty crime, doing time for minor defenses or just thrown in the sl into the slammer for nothing. So they feel hate, which will open them up for the ultimate adventure. Haven't you noticed then, it's always the same pattern. All relatives and friends say that it was not the same person who came out of prison, or that they suddenly changed. Normal kids who liked hip-hop, girls drinking some beer, cars playing soccer and having fun, and they just changed completely, as if they were not the same person anymore. And in prison, Pharaoh has 100% total control over you and controls what you eat, drink and do. When you eat, where you are, what you do, and in my case, in torture Switzerland, even how much you breathe through code O2T. And the code O2T, in fact, is part of mind control as well, which they did to me, but I'm, I'm still here. So it's quite easy to pick you out of your cell in the middle of the night and submit, submit you to some MK Ultra artichoke mind control sessions or even the latest transhumanism mind control as shown here on the picture. And France is, is the leading country in the world at the moment concerning transhumanism. And that's why the interior minister, uh, Valls, in France, is, is saying now we're going to put them all in solitary confinement, all the Muslims. So that's e even easier, you know, to pick you out, in, out of your cell in the middle of the night and, and do all these monstrous things with you, which they do. I mean, it's always uh, psychiatrical patients and uh, prisoners, war prisoners or criminal prisoners who are the first victims of, uh, you know, uh, human experiments and uh, as guinea pigs, you know, there's nothing new. And then in prison, during the day, they have to listen to some infiltrated, inserted PSYOP agents of the royal bloodline of Pharaoh looking and speaking Arabic to indoctrinate you with two million times that life after death is the real deal. And this is also why the so-called terrorists in, uh, of the Paris massacre, uh, they were permitted to say they were trained in Yemen so the US Air Force can bomb, bomb the hell out of them because the Yemenites are absolutely uncontrollable by Pharaoh and the local authorities are desperate not being able to rule the Yemenites who cannot even be bought with a Mercedes as in the rest of the Islamic Ummah. Well maybe the US Navy are just trying to find a solution for their obesity problems by chewing some Yemenite cat and become a skinny themselves. Well, anyway, to be honest, I've become a fat bastard myself because of four years house arrest, one year in prison as a political prisoner, O2T torture and 18 years of Swiss Nazi terror. So I'd better hop along too and choose some of that plant. 
in today's Swiss uh, newspaper on January 12th, 2015, Swiss he calls these heads of state hypocrites. Uh, here you can read the German word, word Heuchler, for hip, meaning hypocrite, about, the, uh, about Charlie Hebdo. These are people who travelled a long way to follow the French invitation for world peace by French Socialist President François Hollande and his Marche Républicaine. Because Swissy is angry because of this. Because Swissy wants war in the world, but only for others. There you can read the whole article. This is uh, La Marche Républicaine. Yesterday, Sunday, after the Paris massacres, the Swiss are angry. They're very angry. And that newspaper I just showed you before is the biggest in Switzerland. It's the voice of the Swiss people, and Swissy likes it very much because they always show that all other peoples races and religions are the bad ones and the hypocrites and not these ones here as the Swiss Justice Minister Simonetta Zomaruga who knows all who knows all about my case and the Swiss Nazi terror of 18 years on me and my family and my small children and under her Ministry of Justice and even admits to others that Swiss Nazi terror on immigrants is totally normal in clean, neutral Switzerland. Here's you standing, by the way, here, next to Merkel and uh, Hollande. Yeah, look at that funny smile. And then attends a peace march against terror in Paris with that funny Swiss smile. That doesn't come from the heart. Well, you tell me who the real hypocrites are here, or Heuchler, as the Swiss prefer to call it. And here's the letter in which she admits to others, and not me, that terror in Switzerland is quite acceptable. Also in connection with the terror attacks of the Swiss Defence League only two months ago with many dead and wounded and about which nobody talks. Just watch the SS for Isis at the beginning of her signature and the Templars V at the end. Just as the French hero police of the Paris massacre carries octagon seal of evil in their banner. So this is not the police themselves, well, they are the police themselves, but it is an infiltrated organization by Octagon and the Swiss. It's not under the, uh, the French Republic or the, uh, the French Parliament, and it is the, uh, the police union, or Le Syndicat, Le Syndicat de la Police. So it's not the police themselves, and there are five, you know, as we have five fingers on a hand. And there's this um, Templar saying, non facet pugnum digito uno. With only one finger, you cannot make a fist. And here's this one finger of the police, the yellow one, and the other ones are the other fingers of the, um, of the hand. You see? The symbols are everywhere. So this is infiltrated by Octogon from Switzerland. And they want more power, more police, more guns more Swiss guns, well the French police all have Swiss guns and they they made it happen, you know, this is infiltration. Uh, they forced, the, I mean the French they make atom bombs, you know, you think they can't they can't make a little a little handgun? No, they all have Zeke, the entire Sw French police they have Swiss Zeke handguns, just as one third of the American uh, the US police. So, I mean symbols don't lie it's here. This is infiltrated by Swissy, by Octogon of the Templars, and they protect their police like sort of, and they say, well, we need Swiss guns. You know, they kill like a Swiss watch as they are so precise, you know. So, in fact, Charlie Hebdo was right-wing, led, 
and so were the three Muslim warriors. And this is also why some Jews too had to be murdered in the raids in Paris because of François Genoux, Hitler and Ulrich, Swiss Ulrich Willis nobility. The 1099 Jerusalem ma massacres on Jews and Arabs by the Nazi Templars and because of old settlements from Pharaoh's time as octagon of the Nazi Templars still is the same old royal bloodline of Pharaoh. I can give you names and proofs of what I say and the true responsibles behind the Paris massacres, but I need a safe haven for me and my family. The Swiss are real opportunists who patiently wait in the spider's web for the eight-legged octagon to strike. How, how controversial it might sound, but in a way those three Muslims in Paris were probably the most honest of all in this utterly dirty affair. Just like the Germans, in a way, thinking to fight for Germany and the G Germanic race, but in reality destroying it. And next to three misled youngsters honestly thinking to fight for Allah, only th another three French policemen were sacrificed like pawns on a political chessboard by the kings and the queens and bishops for the castles of octagons, royal bloodline and their base in the Alps.